You know, I often wonder to myself, how in the world was Isaiah able to live so faithfully? I mean, he endured a very tough ministry. The people of Judah, they wouldn't listen to him. He saw very little fruit, and he was heavily criticized. In fact, he actually had a brutal end. Jewish tradition says that he was sawed in half by King Manasseh. And when you think about all of the trouble, all of the things that he had to endure as a prophet, you can't help but wonder to yourself, how in the world was he so determined to live for God? I mean, how could he just continue to stand up and, and boldly proclaim the word of the Lord in face of such dreadful opposition? How could he never give up? And I want to suggest to you that our passage this morning helps us see how Isaiah was able to stick it out in ministry. It's because he had a personal experience with God. In fact, that's really how all of us can stick it out. Of course, you and I, in all likelihood, are not going to have a visionary experience like Isaiah, but there are elements of his experience that can be applied to people's lives today. And I want to briefly touch on one aspect of his experience that I think that all of us can experience today as believers in Jesus Christ. But before we do, let's of course set the context. You see, Judah had become a nation that no longer feared God. But there was one bright spot in all of this, and his name was King Uzziah. Uzziah became king at the age of 16, and I'm often amazed at that. I mean, I couldn't take care of a goldfish at age 16, let alone an entire kingdom. But he did it, and he did it well. And Uzziah was faithful, the Bible tells us. He was faithful to the Lord for over 50 years. But then you read something devastating in 2 Chronicles 15, verse 16. It says, but after Uzziah became powerful, his pride led to his downfall. He was unfaithful to the Lord his God. Uzziah's pride led to a, an unfaithful decision that destroyed his entire career. Eventually he died in shame. So Isaiah is not only enduring a people that have abandoned God. Not only is he preparing to watch as God judges his people's sins by bringing the enemy of Assyria closer and closer to their doorstep. But their leader, the one man of principle, the, the one man that is faithful, he became filled with pride and he dies in shame. Now this background is important because we read in Isaiah chapter 6 verse 1, in the year that King Uzziah died, I saw the Lord. A tragedy had occurred in, in so many different areas of Isaiah's life, but after the king's death, he has a personal experience with God, an experience that we can also have. Here's a lesson if you're prone to taking notes. People can personally experience the sovereignty of God. Chapter 6, verse 1. In the year that King Uzziah died, I saw the Lord sitting upon a throne, high and lifted up, and the train of his robe filled the temple. Above him stood the seraphim, each had six wings, with two he covered his face, and with two he covered his feet, and with two he flew. And one called to another and said, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord of hosts, the whole earth is full of his glory. Now there's a lot of symbolism that is going on in this text, and, and for Isaiah to use symbolism, it is a very helpful way to describe transcendent realities. So as we study this passage, just recognize that you and I are not meant to draw this scene. That's important to realize. We're only meant to unpack the symbolism and interpret it. So you see, Isaiah sees that although King Uzziah is dead, the true king is very much alive. You see, he's given this vision of the Lord, and he's sitting high and lifted up upon the throne, and, and the train of his robe is filled with the, uh, fills the temple. And the, the, the scene, it's to fill our minds with a sense of majesty, that this sovereign God is sitting upon the throne, high and exalted. And these seraphim, they, they fill the air with their heavenly chorus. They sing, holy, holy, holy is the Lord of hosts. So Isaiah is confronted with a holy sovereign God. And we read in verse 4, And the foundations of the thresholds shook at the voice of him who called, and the house was filled with smoke. And I said, Woe is me. 
Isaiah has an overwhelming experience of God's sovereignty. And he says, woe is me. Now after this experience, we have to recognize that Isaiah would, would always be able to remember that no matter what goes on in the world, there is a sovereign king that holds the reins. Eventually, Isaiah, he, he stands toe-to-toe -to -toe with the king of Judah, and he challenges him. Listen, he was able to endure intense opposition. And the reason for this is because once you have been terrified by the king of the universe, I mean, what human king would ever be able to come along and scare you? Isaiah, he couldn't be intimidated, he couldn't be bought, he couldn't be manipulated, he couldn't be silenced. And as you and I are thinking about this text today, I encourage you, you may not be given a vision and, and hear heavenly beings singing the chorus of holy, 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 but you can personally experience the sovereignty of God. When you think about this vision, this Bible passage has made clear to us that God is sovereign. And for those Christians today who have experienced tragedy, much like Isaiah, or opposition, we can get through it. We can get through it because we have a sovereign God that is seated upon the throne. We can be faithful to our King in a society that seems to be completely falling apart spiritually. As a believer, you can stick it out. You don't have to give up. The temptation to abandon God is great. The temptation to, to, to chase after the, the world, of course, is great. The temptation to become lovers of ourselves, just as King Uzziah became, it is great but we can stick it out when we remind ourselves that we have a sovereign king who is worthy of our obedience and our praise. He is worthy of us sticking it out, never giving up. And for those that are unbelievers today, people on the edge of faith, and you're, you're wanting to know a bit more about this God, well, here he is in all of his glory. He's much bigger than you and I, and he's much bigger than anyone that you have ever known or heard of. And the fact that you are watching this video at this moment is because God has sovereignly decreed it to be so. He holds the reins of your life and mine, whether we want Him to or not. Well, thank you so much, and God bless you in the way.